my spirits me and my regency imperial 2 and the radio and the video gates are rolling yeah here i am on my lafayette telstat ssp 25 with the birds chirping in the background i push pull high level plate modulator Explosive space modulator. It's making me very angry. I think this crazy crake has got a high Tachi board in it. What was in these? Cybernets. Ah, oh, man, I'm thinking the Sears. Yeah, Sears was high Tachi. Crake was Cybernet. I have one JC Penny radio that's a Hitachi. Yeah, that's a cousin of my TRC-46. The Gemtronics GTX-5000 tubes are Hitachi tubes. The and a Panasonic Chassis radio, go figure. There it is. This here, uh, Lafayette, I believe, is an early Cybernet. I thought I'd blow the dust off this Imperial and see if it still worked. I guess it does. Yeah, just like last week. Didn't run the Imperial last week. I wasn't here. Sunday, I should say. Mm, yeah, well, I was just blowing the dust off of it then. My antenna's fixed. Yay! Did you find a, a, a specific problem, or you just, just gang-banged a whole bunch of things? No, I found the smoking gun. What was it? The, the connection where my, hard, my hardline connector actually... The shoulder of the shield was not made it up with this with the mandrel part. Like you wiggled it back and forth and make a good connection, a bad connection, a good connection, bad connection. Took, took, took it all apart, reshouldered it, and put it all back together. And now you're back on that antenna. That's right. But I took the whole damn thing down, replaced that feed line up to the antenna that was RG8X, and now it's LMR 400 to the hard line. Ha ha ha. But my antenna is less than vertical. I was going to say, while you were at it, you should have straightened it up. Yeah, well, that was supposed to happen, but it didn't didn't really work out. Physics kind of got in my way. How less than vertical? I don't know. It ain't vertical. It ain't 45, but it's sure, sure closer to 45 than it is vertical. Yeah, maybe it'll be good for DX. Yeah, well, maybe I'll do something about it at some point if I get time again. But it's up. Was that Wonder Boy? The one and only. What's going on here, buddy? Oh, damn it, boy. You're back. Back like scoliosis. <laughs> Good to hear you. Back like bad Chinese food. Back and black. Wonder Boy. Back like a heart attack. Sounding loud over here. Ten foe. Yeah, I'm over here in Gilbertville now, out of PP Town. 
Yeah, we're all near it. Nobody wants to be in it. I drive through there on the lower and first or second gear just to make a lot of noise when I pass them up. Where are you? Is that your right? This is the uh, deep light. Doesn't sound all that good. Let me try a different mic. I don't think this thing really likes the plus two as much. Yeah, there's a very low level squeal in there, and I think it might be just what's distorting your audio. Hey, Bagger. Yeah. Who made the high gain radios? Is this the same company that made the antennas? High gains radios, they're solid state radios, were made by Cybernet. The, uh, the Utopia? I'm not sure who made that. That was a one off. I mean, I've never seen another one like it. I've got a high gain, high range over here that I haven't run in some time. I'm trying to get it running. Uh, it, it keys up, but then its dead key slowly fails. I don't know what's wrong with it. It's old. And it certainly is. Handheld D104 Bravo. Yeah, that's more better. Okay, I don't think it likes the turners as much. I had another turner on there that was giving me all kinds of problems. I put the statics on it, it works fine. Yeah, I can hear you now. Still a little bit pinchy sounding. Just one of those Chinese static handhelds. Damn Chinese. Yeah, ho hopefully the Chinese... This, well, the made in China will be a thing of the past. I wouldn't count on it. No, but it sure would be nice. A lot of people out there would rather buy, buy a dial fine than, than spend the money for a Yezu or an Icon. I think they should pay reparations for what they for, for that for the virus. I think they should pay us reparations for it. I'll take my USA made Regency Imperial glow and glass and keep it running. I think our generation is going to be more the uh, not buy that kind of crap and, um, you know, buy real stuff. I was laughing because um, I was listening to uh, the radio today and the Europeans are all wanting to thank the Chinese for such a great job they have done on containing this and getting everything under control. And I'm thinking, what are you looking for? And I read between the lines. They're actually looking for the Chinese to buy a lot of their struggling companies up. Yeah, well, it's all part of the, 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 the master plan, and China owns the whole world. Um, I was starting to think that when I was reading some of this. I'm like, you've got to be out of your freaking mind, man. You know, they're all in trouble over there, and... Um, the uh, Spain and Italy want uh, Northern Europe uh, because they're supposedly economic better off than the rest of them to help bail them out and give them all kinds of this, that, and the other. And they're all screaming at one another. And I said, well, this is why you guys started this thing called the EU. You want it to be like us, and it ain't working. And socialism is only going to last while you got other people's money to spend. Yeah, that's usually the first thing that runs out. Yeah, so I've been kind of watching this. And I, was, I was laughing pretty good about it today. I couldn't believe it. And I wanted to say something to a couple of people over there that were sending me stupid messages on it. And I said, you know what, just let it go. Yeah, well. Yeah, this is a mess. It's not the same as any other... Uh, virus uh, outbreak that we've had in, in any in my lifetime they're just i don't know it's just, it's, it's it's wrong in so many different levels not since 1917 yeah just a little inconvenient
That's classic radio roundup. But I can buy gas for two dollars and forty nine cents a gallon for high octane gas. That's not a bad deal. There was a breaker out there. Yeah, well that's the other thing too. I mean gas has come down, but they're still screwing us over because the wholesale price of gas is like sixty nine cents, which means it should be no more than about a buck seventy. And they're still charging us over two bucks a gallon. So, you yeah, know, they're not in any hurry to bring that down. Europe is probably like seven dollars. Come on, Breaker, for Classic Radio Roundup. It's more than all frequency. I tried tuning them in and ain't that. It's just all like overdriving an amplifier or something. But I did hear that other one that was a little further out earlier. doing what? My neighbor. Neighbor. Ten beggars to Neighbor. Neighbor. Where's all my neighbors? You ain't gonna talk there. Oh man, I got my son-in-law going the other day. He, he did a really good invitation. He had me laughing. Who did? 64. Yeah, it was a really good invitation. I was cracking up. I heard the real deal on the other day. I was scanning the channels and he was in there talking. No way. I thought he finally gave it up. Oh, no. He ain't got nothing else going on, I guess. Like the rest of us. My radio room is nice and clean. My cables are all straightened out. The antennas are working. Bring the hell out of me. Well, I'm still working, so I have a little bit of extra time because I, my commute's been taken away, but, you know, it's still like normal for me. Yeah, uh, 64, known as Reverend Dr. Bleedover. <laughs> the guy's, the guy's like, he's on 15 right now. He's really bleeding me bad. Yeah, well, yeah, some people just do that. They just bleed. <laughs> Some people just don't. But anyway, yeah. You know, I, I well, I got this week, and I'm supposed to go back next week, and that hasn't changed. Well, hopefully you can. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Hello, audio. Classic radio roundup. Man, you're laughing my like teeth. Ah, that's this push-pull audio in this Regency Imperial. Sounds real good. Para, 6AB1s in push-pull. No, 6AQ5s, I'm sorry. 6AQ5s in AB1 push-pull audio. Yeah, that's it. I get it. Yeah, get it right, damn it. Ah, uh, AB1, okay. It's been a while since I said that phrase. I got to get it, get it right. Yeah, like your long-nosed suburban stucco ranch house. There's not many radios that got push-pull audio. Not too many. The sonar does. Regency does. Not too many. CBs anyway. You know, I'm not talking other radios. But yeah, not too. you don't see it often. Yeah, not even the trams or the Brownings have uh, push-pull. Man, when you, when you slam this thing with audio, it doesn't make a distortion like other radios do on the scope. It does something different. Yeah. I uh, talked to my buddy Steve at lunch and he said this weekend he's just too busy and um, he'll, uh, he'll get to it this weekend to uh, follow up. Uh-huh. Yeah, I imagine he is busy. All kinds of weird stuff going on. 
Probably we should not go. One, two, audio. It's better that way, yes, yes. Um, he had actually a planned, uh, planned trip uh, right now out to his usual site, and that got all blown off for some other stuff. And he said it's just unbelievable right now. He can't, uh, can't get there. And um, he, he go, he does, he flies commercial out to the west coast, and then uh, that's it. Then it's a lot of different uh, aircraft take him out the rest of the way. And he, just crazy. So I said, don't worry, it's not a rush. I said, we're just really interested in uh, somebody. I uh, gave him roughly the address. I said, if that lines up, then I said, go chase it. Of course, thank you. Any better? Yeah, I don't remember exactly which road he was on. I was at his house, you know, when he first started playing with ham radio stuff, and he had a really nice uh, um, separate. It was, I'm trying to remember if it was a Yankee or what it was. It was a Drake, maybe. That separate transmit receiver. It was a nice little setup he had. The interesting thing, though, is that he's still, I think, only a technician, which I thought he made general, but maybe not. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, Malone was the other one who was down on Clearview. Um, in the back, uh, his tower was out uh, in the trees um, in the backyard, and um, I know that from, uh, I checked my brother, he knew, uh, he went to school with uh, the kid, and um, they moved, and he doesn't know where they moved to, but that was the other, I don't remember that guy's Then there was a guy on Pulaski that had that um, four element uh, quad. Because I was in that house a couple of times, and I know he had downstairs in the in the rec room is where he had his radio set up, and I I remember a WA, and I don't remember the rest, and I well well we'll find out, maybe someday I'll have hopefully that's a little better. Somebody out there, you still sound uh, fuzzy. Yeah, turn my receive volume up a little bit. I can barely hear you. Yeah, is that who that is? Yeah, they're kind of talking under us. All of the other guys tuning up. Who was that trying to get in? You did sound a little bit louder that time. Oh, uh, the test county up by uh, I Bernie apart. Lack of loudness isn't the problem. Lack of clarity is. Yeah, that station is in Chester County near Hibernia Park. Yeah, I heard that. Uh, it's a mobile radio. What a Good evening, gentlemen. Asian. Hello, Badger. For a living. Oh, no. What's up, Badger? Well, uh, starting my second day of uh, my, uh, of, of another prison term. Oh, uh, no, work-related? Yeah, my um, companies, uh, I don't know what you want to call it. They called me Tuesday and they told me they were going to put me on a furlough. Oh, well. So if it's for any length of time, you can sign right up for unemployment. Yeah, I got I to gotta call in tomorrow morning and uh, get my last four days. Um, because we get paid by the mile and by the stop. So I don't get paid by the hour, so I told him I'd call in tomorrow morning around 10 o'clock and get the uh, the official number of the day of what last week was. Because they pay a week uh, uh, they pay a week behind schedule. There you go. Yeah, I want my Obama phone. thing was acting stupid where or when. By station, you have a small problem with it. 
Did you figure out what it was? My antenna connection? Yeah. What happened? It's fixed. It was my hardline connector. It was unseated, let's say. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, it sounds pretty good tonight, so I assume you got it fixed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it fixed. That's the best SWR I've seen in years. Excellent. Excellent. It actually shows what I have at the antenna. Holy cow. I got a good signal on you tonight. It's got a lot of forward drive in it. It sounds good. Uh, that's just radio, man. I love this radio. This is, this is one of my favorites. Regency Imperial. Man, thing rocks. It's got so much audio, and it's like you got to, th whoa, 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 Johnny, throttle back, throttle back. It does have good clarity. Okay, I'm sitting back. Now, here's a thing to do. Sign up for an amateur radio VE session with an email handle that says untamed CB op. <laughs> wants to know if the VE session is still going on, and if uh, not, uh, why not, and if what uh, precautions are being taken for uh, to uh, assure that uh, COVID will be not spread around. I'm not even going to answer that one. I figured it's somebody out there just wanting to be a smart ass. Yeah, tell them to take your hockey pucks and go to Clearwater. Unshamed CB op. Man, oh man. What the heck is that? Hold on, I gotta take a look at the back end. Hold on. Who is that? He's already enough untamed hams. <laughs> well, yeah, there used to be untamed CB ops. Yeah, we don't need to make more. <laughs> it's an AOL address. <laughs> I love it. I'm not, I'm not even gonna entertain that. That's funny. I love that. Hello, neighbor. Hello there, Rick. Hi, Ranger. How are you all doing tonight? I'm sitting here keeping warm by my CB radio. You're going to need that this weekend. Yeah, I know. It was nice today, actually. Yeah, it was nice today. Yeah, we ate dinner out on the porch, out on the deck tonight. Got everything all uh, pressure washed yesterday and put up the canopy and had dinner tonight. We've been eating out since I pressure washed uh, late last week. Pressure washed the deck all off, made it pretty. All of a sudden, she wants to eat outside. Sure, man, you want to be outside. Don't want to be stuck in a house. I got the bike out today and went riding. There you go, that's fun. Yeah, well, I hadn't done it for a while. You take the bike out and go for a ride. I did that yesterday. Oh, well, gotta get out and ride once in a while. That's right, once in a while. Still haven't stopped anywhere. I went out for a ride, came home, and didn't stop anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I just go out for a ride, do 10, 15, 20 miles, whatever. Close my boat, and I come home. Hopefully without encountering any vehicles that want to run me over, Roger. What was that bagger? He took you out. Yeah, you're practicing social distancing. If I'm not, especially if I'm not stopping anywhere. You know, I got my fuel supply here. That's why I don't understand these people complaining about people who go out and drive in their cars. It's like, wait a minute. If they're not going around with other people, then what's the difference? Yeah, I can still be, you know, in my car, and I don't and I have to interact with anybody. I go out for a drive and come home. I mean, how is that a problem? Not. All right, I thought it would dazzle you guys with an old Lafayette Comstat 19, but obviously that didn't work well, so this old Cobra 29 XLR will have to do for now. Sorry. That one sounds a little bit better, but you're still a little rough around the edges. Like you're, you're driving an amp a little too hard. Yeah, but I can hear him now. And understand what he's saying. But still isn't right. Still perfect. Yeah, but I can at least understand him now. Let, let him talk a little bit more. Talk a little bit more. Uh, how about I turn off this monitor?
I uh, don't see how I could be driving an amp too hard, but but I'll keep checking things here. It just sounds like a stock mic is all. Uh, this is actually the old Cobra Dynamite. I was able to find batteries. And uh, maybe this needs to be turned down a little bit. Uh, it's just you got too much carrier and not enough headroom. That's what I would say. Too much carrier. Maybe the batteries are dead. I just changed them. Yeah, it just, uh, it just has that stock Mikey sound. There's no audio to speak. Well, it's there. It's completely flat. Yeah, it's a little fuzzy. I don't like having that. Uh, I've got a... Uh... Oh, no, I don't. Not without an adapter. Never mind. Hey, Sparky. How you been? How you been? Good. Working. I figured you were. Yeah, I heard you were going in uh, just kind of regular hours. They cut me back. Um, I get 10 a day. Yeah, there you go. I'll listen to you on the way home from time to time. Yeah, 10, you should key up. I know, those darn sandbaggers. They're everywhere. Only the sandbaggers know. It's a Ranger radio. A Ranger work radio. Okay, I, you know, I, I, I still try to wrap my head around that one. Yeah, like you, me too. How is it that you can hear me in country, but people can't hear me in Phoenixville? I don't know, but I can hear you in Green Lane. Alright, a uh, newer Ranger radio is scratchy push to talk, so might be making lots of noise, but is the audio any better? Still sounds a little rough around the edges. If you could drop the power down a little bit, you'd probably be fine. That's curious. I didn't tweak the RF in this radio. All I did was change a couple of uh, old electrolytics that were just looking too old. Gentlemen, good evening around the band train signing on. Gang's all here. Good evening, train. A Ranger, Bagger, Sparky. Let's see who else did I hear? Pete, I heard Pete. And whoever else is out there. I don't recognize the person that's uh, on the radio. The other, uh, I don't recognize his voice. Hello, Night Train. Hey, County Wise. Countywide radio on my glowing glass antique flea market transmitter. Yeah, I was trying to uh, give the old Browning a little airtime. Why not? Rooster. Give you time around a man. Then be here 64 around Nazareth with the wave. There he is. With his man's son. Yeah, I heard him. That knocker out there in the distance for the train. Come on. Yeah, stand by, 64. Hang on. Uh, 64 went on top of that person that's calling for the night train. Uh, that operator out there for the night train. Come on back. Ah, uh, yeah, realtor, realtor. How you doing, man? I do have a grip on you. There, there was another station coming from my north. How you doing, buddy? Doing all right, man. How about yourself? Good, man. Appreciate the comeback. Just trying to say what's up. Yeah, you're doing all right. It's a little busy in here, but, man, it's nice to hear from you. 10-4? Roger, Roger. Thanks for the comeback. 7-3. All right, dear realtor. I'm back on the side. Hello there, 64. What's going on, my son-in-law? You out there raising cane? Hey, what's going on, Countywide? Oh, Countywide, what's going on, bud? Top of the evening to you. You know what's going on. It's Classic Radio Roundup. Of course, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm checking in. I wanted to 
spike the mic and uh, wait for one down there. Yeah, while well, you're doing your thing, once again, sounding good down here tonight on my glow and glass radio. Well, I tell you what, save some of the flowers for yourself, man. I'm on this uh, PC 76 XL, no classic, but uh, it is what it is. Smoking up here, man. This thing's got, uh, this thing's got a weak receive in it. I got you up here about four S units. Modulation is, uh, is definitely top notch, that's for sure. Yeah, this radio is one that uh, that does a good job of sending out some audio. It's one of my favorite radios to play with, and it's train approved. Man, this thing is is physically train approved as well on on the looks. So there you go. Looks good, sounds good. I'm happy. Yeah, for that, yeah, you said it. it sounds real good, man. <coughs> nice and loud, but clean and also, man, got the nice fidelity behind it. So. Me and my antique flea market transmitter, Brigger. Free and social distancing on my CB radio. Oh, that? On a virus free. All right, man. It was good to hear that. No doubt about it. I hear we got an old, uh, an old Channel 21 guy back on the radio. He came up to 31 last night, asked for a break, and uh, it was good to hear his voice. Old Wonder Boy's back out here. Yeah, he's back. with what you got. I think he ought to pay you five dollars to take it away.
Cubed. Well, you're making it over here, Spring Mount Ski Area, Double D. Sparky said hello. Oh, that's good to know, Sparky. Yeah, just uh, clicking the channel around, caught you guys. Yeah, hello, hello. Spitfire, somewhere northeast of Pottstown. Yeah, I'm in New Hanover Township. I'm just north of you. Oh, 10 4. I've got me a new neighbor. <laughs> Does he have any classic radios? That's what you stumbled upon. Wednesday night, classic radio roundup. Classic radios rule, and all others drool. Uh, Global 2000 counts a classic radio. Yep, that certainly is a classic. Yeah, yeah, it's at the later end of the scale, but it certainly qualifies. Yeah, 10 4 x guy. How's the sound out there to you guys? Feel good. I'm on a Regency Imperial. Ah, 10 4 2 set. Yeah, glow on glass. Vacuum tube radio. I'm on a Craco 23 channel at base station. I thought he had one of those in his van. The whole. Yeah. Crazy Craco. And I'm on a 1971 vintage Lafayette Telstat SSB 25. We're going to silly old Royce 604. I think the Regency Imperial 2 here is from like 1969, 1970. Yeah, that's late 60s, early 70s. That's about right. Far out. What's the big one? 1979, I believe. But they they produced them all the way up to like 1990. Ah, uh, 1040. I have no idea how old this set is. It could be as old as 1979, it could be as new as 1990. It all depends on where it was made, too. Ah, 10 4. Here, what's the rarest Citizens Band radio? The rarest? Yeah, Pete, there's one for you. What's the rarest Citizens Band radio? What do you guys think is the rarest radio ever made? This 11 meter radio. Buddy Bay Station. Yeah, the Buddy Bay, or the Metro Tech Space Station. Uh, that's what I was going to say, the Metro Tech Space Station. Well, if you can find a picture of it, it's... Or that, uh, that Demco, uh, Star 2 or whatever, that, uh... Yeah, the Super Satellite 2. There's only two of them. Yeah, the 40-channel version. It's pretty rare when there's only two. What about that Mark Sidewinder 46? Yeah, that's, that's on the rarer side, I would think. That's one of those, right? How many Utica Town and Country 2s? I got one. Hey, Utica sold quite a bit of those when they were around. Yeah, but how many are there now? I think I got two. Uh, find an XTAL base station. Yeah, buddy XL, right? Bagger, who was that who was that guy that was testing out those different microphones? Where you said his carrier was too big. Honestly, I'm not even sure. His voice sounded familiar to me, but I couldn't place it. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't know for sure either. I didn't recognize him at all. Smell ham. No, oh, no, we smell ham. Where's your finger been? You, uh, you hang out with Miss Piggy? Uh, I don't know. Do you make any Kermit the Frog? Martin Ernie. Hey, Bert. Hey, how'd 
did we get two double D's? Ernie? That's what she said. I was talking to him the other night, he said he was from Pottsville. Don't sound like the same double D I talked to. That's like what I said last night. How'd I want it with a pair of double D's? <laughs> and this, the other double D, I, I haven't talked to the other one yet. He may show up tonight. Ah, oh, Blue Max, he thought, we thought he got said, said something that made him comment. Blue Max. quarantine to it's like his family's watching TV and he tends to interfere with that. My mobile ring in my in my truck leaves KYW on my radio. He'll steer you right. Uh, yeah, it's got all that echo stuff. I, I, uh, I, I don't like that. Stuff. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Get, the, get the soldering iron out. We can take care of that real quick. Just turn all knobs to the right. Oh, oh, no, no, I mean... QRP what? Who is he? Operator. 
Identify yourself so we know what to call you, operator. Ah, uh, I guess I didn't do that. A couple of you invited me here a couple of days ago. Uh, haven't figured out what I'd like to call myself, so for the time being, it's Rich in uh, East Greenville. Good evening, Rich. Ah, uh, yeah, hello, Rich, in uh, East Greenville. Yeah, you talked to us on sideband the other night. Yeah, and I think I told you Pennsburg because that's what most people recognize, but you guys are all close enough to know East Greenville. Yeah, uh, good evening, Rich, from North Coventry. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Pete, the Spitfire, down here around Fagleysville, or Limerick. Richie Rich. I thought about using Wolverine. Sounds a little odd, but I had a Toyota pickup truck that I bought brand new back in the, you know, like 1978, before Toyota actually put four-wheel drive on them. Mine had a uh, conversion kit, put some Jeep Dana parts on there to make it four-wheel drive, some outfit in California, and they called it a Wolverine. That was the only thing I could think of. I'm not sure I want to do that, though. When you say Wolverines, I think of Red Dawn. Wolverines! Yeah. That works. I always wanted to piss in a radiator. You guys down here every Wednesday night? We're here. Wednesday night, 8 to 10. On 27 115. Yeah, well, at least, uh, at least uh, you can understand this one. I probably got 15, 11 meter radios on the shelf, and the first five I grab, uh, uh, not getting very good at them. So clearly, I got a lot of work to do. Yeah, you'll find one that works. Just you'll get a right mic combination going on. What antenna you have? Me and my Regency Imperial. Glowing glass. Hello, Channel 13. What's up, bro? Now, Mark, you got two double Ds. Oh, that can't, that can't be. Yeah, I know. More than a handful of wasted, honey. He's been waiting for you to come on. It happens. You need to defend your name. That's all right. There's two Rangers. Yeah, there's only one Ron. Yeah, but I know of another operator. Hello, Ron. There are two, two hundreds. Ron, how there's two double Ds? There he is, double D. <laughs> I heard that striker. They're good radios. Striker is. I know somebody that runs one in Antigua. Just as long as you stay away from the MOSFETs. Yeah, they don't handle bolts. Double D, call for that guy in Pottstown. He's calling for you. Yeah, go ahead. Where's where's the other double D? Right here. Nobody but your panty snatcher with the wave. Wow, that's amazing. All right, we're on the side, I guess. I was double D since 
right now in front of your door, right? Nope, and I just strive for consistency. Don't ever pray for that, right? Little 30,000 watts, you know. <laughs> lots and lots and lots of watts. God damn it, right? I like beryllium. Volts and amps make watts. All knobs to 11. All knobs to the right. Well, actually, my squelch knob works backwards on this. Yeah. But now the whole pro's that way. The squelch is backwards. A couple of reasons he's like that. The Formula 23 was like that. Yeah, probably a bunch of them were sold for that pr problem. Must be a Regency thing. Because my 123B is that way, too. Yeah, I think the CR-142 is. Aren't the Royces like that, too? Not the ones that I've seen. I think so, Ron, some of them. Not this one. I, this one's a 604, and no, it's not like that. Ah, oh, but the squelch works so nice. Oh, that was the meter was backwards. Started out top and moved to the bottom. Blue. That one. That's I guess B E. Like the Trinidad. Yeah, they were that too, weren't they? Yeah, it was sideways. Yeah. Yeah, and they back swing. Metro Tech Pacers got a vertical S meter. But some awesome is more e equal than other awesome. I'd like to take the ones I have and convert them to like uh, old style transistor. Get rid of the MOSFETs. Do a reverse conversion. Yeah, you could do that if you could find the right bipolars. Yeah, 69s. Yeah, just don't get the ones from China. Pete learned that lesson. Yeah, <laughs> I'd pull them out of something I have. Or pay the money. Pay the Piper RF parts. Is somebody from 1969? No, they have old stock. Oh, okay. Yeah, just don't want to, just don't buy the ones from China. They're crap. Yeah, they blow up real easy. Yeah, it's like that new PP100 style 2SC2879. They say everything's thing is junk. No, they went past that version. HG is the version now. Is it? Okay. Is it any good? Hell no. Okay. China is trash. Well, thank you very much for that observation, Bagger. Actually, it's recycled trash. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it is. We'll take your blown out transistors and make them good again. And we'll sell you some N95 masks with COVID already in it. Preloaded. Did you see the bottom of my uh, email message? The um, new uh, little uh, note I have on the bottom there. It says COVID 19 flu made in China, patent pending. Didn't make it to the uh, Taiwan ROC. Yes, the Republic of China. Yeah, Taiwan snubbed it. I actually had somebody here really upset when I sent that. I sent him an email and it was on the bottom. They said, no, 
No, that's not right. The, uh, this thing didn't come out of China. Where the hell do they think it came from? Sears? Contrails? Sears? No, no, I had a couple of people really upset about that. I just looked at it and I said, delete. I wasn't getting into that. Hey, believe it or not, man. Unbelievable. It came from the flat side. <laughs> Twilight Zone? Came from the dark side. The underside of the flat earth. I wanted to tell them why. Well, I, I guess yeah, you're probably one of those guys who lift, licks the toilet uh, seats to uh, make sure you're uh, safe and you're going to get it, right? Came from the dark side of the moon. A lead Tide Pod. Sparky, I'm taking you back to Sears where I got you. Hey, once upon a time, you could buy a whole house kit from Sears. There's one uh, right on uh, Charlotte Street, north end of Pottstown. Oh, what a, kid, what a Sears kid house is? Yeah, my sister was renting a room there for a while, and I got a tour of the place. Oh, yeah, it's a Sears kid house. Pretty cool house. Yeah. Amazing what you could have bought in the uh, early 1900s. Came by rail into Pottstown, and then they trucked it up from the train depot up to the, up the road. Put it together. Yeah, now you can't get anything from Sears. Or by rail. Chat showed up. You got to say nothing yet. Spit part of the have rail service down there. In Pottstown, yeah, yeah, the rails that are still there. I mean, um, I'm sorry, at your work. Oh well, we not anymore. No more tracks down there. The tracks are there, but they don't use it. There's commuter line that gets used. Yeah, we're on a main main corridor for the the high speed line and the and the local. Oh yeah, how fast do they go past there? Sometimes seventy miles an hour. Uh, only seventy? But you sell it to them with a hundred. Oh, I don't know. It's moving. Maybe they got our speed restriction through there. Faster than my truck will go. Yeah, I haven't heard that the uh, train avoidance uh, system going on tonight. I thought I did hear it tonight, earlier on this radio. I, th I swore I heard it. Yeah, I didn't hear it yet. Well, there's another uh, problem uh, in Pottstown that uh, Green Dog and, and Badger hear some kind of pulsating noise that ends up going between 13 and 14. Oh, a variable bush boogie. Yeah, I'm going to invite Bluebird down there to go sit over there on Bellevue Avenue. Tree rats. To uh, deviate two, two channels wide. And you could pick the speed, right? Tree rats. Good evening. There's a breaker out there. Is that you, Bite Buster? Renegade down the west, Chester. Oh, it's Renegade. Nice train, by the way. Speaking of trains. How you guys doing up there tonight? Sounds like you got a full house. Yeah, the house is full. We're practicing social distancing. Yeah, you stay over there. Floor. Keep your mask on your face while you talk. Stop picking your nose. Hey, we're not practicing social distancing because you sound like you're in my living room. Oh yeah, how wide am I? Take a, take a little trip to the side once. Well, I mean, you sound like you're in my in living room. Uh, that's only 30 yes years. Bye. No, I meant left to right, you know. How many? It's like way too many. More than one. Yeah, well, he's three or four of me, so. More tonight there on 15. Yeah. Just saying. You brought it up. Oh, what up? All right, guys, thanks for letting me jump in here. I'm going to hop off and go fiddle with this old Lafayette. Uh, thought I had it working, but...
Need some more, obviously. East Greenville, catch you later. It's working good, man. See you next week. Yeah, man. Stop back anytime. Good night, Rick. Bye, Rich. Take it easy. Think sounds okay. Good night, Rich. Thanks for stopping by. Classic Radio Roundup. Have a good night, Rich. Welcome to the fold. Breaker. Come on, Breaker. Good evening, everyone. Hello, right back. Hey, hey Gumby. Gumby. What you doing, Gumby? I'm nah, not too much staying out of trouble. Good deal. I'm not going to get in trouble. I don't even hear this guy. Well, you can't get in trouble. You're not allowed to go out of the house at 3 o'clock. I know I saw the drone and I turned back and went back inside. <laughs> yeah, well, you can walk around, but you're not allowed to drive anywhere. I have my essential personnel papers. I have this thing called the U.S. Constitution that says otherwise. I'm sorry, don't impede your progress. No, it's called martial law. I'm glad you said it, Bagger, because I was gonna. What about martial law? Yeah, well, then nobody's declared martial law yet. Penny Marshal? Mm. And if they do, I think it's gonna go from martial law to civil war. Did you like uh, Penny Marshal, or uh, what was the other girl on that show? Laverne? Yeah, Laverne. Penny Marshal was Laverne. I have one for you. My daughter was on the phone with my wife, with my daughter earlier, and she was saying that the Walmart down there in Levittown area, they had a fight break out in the parking lot because they wouldn't let so many, because they were limiting the amount of people that were allowed to store one. Where? The cops had to break up the fight. Yeah, that happens. Hey, how's this radio sound out there, guys? Uh, I hear you. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, 2517 just fired this one up. No, that one's working, driver. Making a trip to... A little too much echo, but hey. I hear you here at my old radio station. I hear it here in Mount Penn. How about that? Is that better? A little bit. You can turn down the time some more, the volume part of that processor. Time's good. How about right there? Nah, I lost it. Dude, that's perfect. Leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll leave it right, right here. here. Uh, I'm up here. Can you say worldwide, worldwide? Countywide, countywide, countywide. Walk it half wide. Kind of sounds like old Uncle Brucey there. My AKA in Delco is factory wide. I like it when Spitfire decides to park in my driveway. Where did my NTT market jump? He was that so. Hey Spitfire, have you gotten any word when you're going to be heading back yet? Day after Easter. Wait too. Everybody sounds like the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know I've had this drought. Eh, it's about 20 years. Well, I don't think that radio is made in China because it works. It's like a mall 200. We just pass it around. Ugh, man. Everybody's so loud tonight. <laughs> no, it's yours. You can always turn down the old volume. Pass it back. No, I'm surprised that everybody sounds like really good tonight. It's like, I don't know. Big classic radio roundup. Take one down, pass it around. That's right. Yeah. Hey, Bagger, I liked your radio from last week better. What, uh, better than this one? Yeah, the one last week was better. The Mini 23. Yeah, the one sound real crispy. Well, this one should sound fairly good. It does sound good, but I like the other one better. Same microphone. Yeah, different radio. Breaker. Go ahead, Breaker. How's everybody doing, Mr. K here? Mr. K, 
Hey, check in. I was thinking about you the other day. Oh, man, you were What were you doing? <laughs> I was driving into work, and I missed pocket change and you guys talking in the morning. Yeah, Roger, on that, it gets kind of boring. Yeah, and thinking about my uh, mother-in-law moved out of the, the neighborhood and stuff. She, they're all doing good, but, you know, we don't go down there no more. Thing needs a little bit of audio. You get up close to that mic, it sounds better. A little bit more. Ranger, what, my audio is low? Yeah. Flame his hands in there. Okay. I heard him. Alright, how's that? that you are. I'm up on it. Yeah, Roger. There you are. Thank you. You're welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Yeah, just jumping in here saying hello. Hey, Sam, Slam and Sam. Hey, Spitfire. County wide. I got you in there. How's it been, Ranger? I haven't, I haven't been on for a while. Hi, Sam. Uh, uh, it's been all right. You all been busy down here? Come on, you know me. I'm always busy. <laughs> Whether it work or not, right? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm getting out of there at 4.30, so I'm good. Nah, that ain't good, man. You're losing the overtime. You know, look, look how much uh, overtime I've put in in the last uh, year and a half, three years now. Yeah, I'm sure that. Helps with the college fund. <laughs> yeah, that it does. Oh, 
Yeah, he was trying barefoot. You heard him, though, 200, barefoot? Yeah, I did. And this is President Adams trying to get my name. Hello? Yeah, I heard him. 10-4 under President Adams. I have a problem. His voltage regulator is going. Uh, yep, I'm dropping in power. Okay. Hey, Jack. Yeah, how you doing tonight? Good, yeah, pretty good.
up, Sparky? You're doing a 2K? Yeah. 3K classic. There you go. 3K is not a bad, bad one. 5K I like. 5K is nice. If it had 160, you know, it would be perfect. Not the 877s are good, good sturdy tubes. Alpha 77 with the Peter Dahl transformer in there, two holer, and you, uh, you got a nice uh, 6KW uh, desktop. All right, with the Henrys, they put good iron in there. And those oil-filled caps, they don't dry out. Yeah, they, they're pretty good. The AK is not bad. The problem with the AK is some of the parts are uh, really nuisance to get, and um, there's a lot of stuff you have to build yourself if you want to, and it's just a, a big, bulky amplifier. <laughs> and they're pretty heavy. Oh, yeah. But having a doll transformer is nice. I mean, that's a luxury. I like my A11As. Which is made by Hammond. Hammond bought them out. Seven is nice. Moved uh, two summers ago out of Lancaster, um, a 3K. Uh, 3K Ultra. Um, buddy of mine bought one. We moved it uh, out of Lancaster. A guy was running it all the time. And uh, he became a silent key. And, uh, yeah, I added a little more to my collection there, Rick. And um, he ran it for about uh, two weeks and he sold it. Yeah, continuously ran. What'd you add into the collection, Kate? What'd you get? I found a little more space on my walls. Uh, 433 was uh, getting rid of some pictures, so I picked up a couple uh, Norman Rockwells from him. Oh, guess what I found today? Uh, what'd you find? Uh, uh, a 31-inch Stormtrooper. Get out of here. Yep. Lucky. He's not that old. He's, he's not that old. But he's in good shape. Oh, you gonna collect dust in your office or in the, or in your radio room or the garage? Ha <laughs> ha uh, He's already in the radio room. Oh, is your, is your radio room gonna look like mine? Can he hold stuff? He's got something there's a slot in his hands, Sparky. I don't really quite know what he holds because I, I haven't seen enough pictures with him holding a gun or anything. I got a buy. I got some Star Wars, yeah. R2 D2 Wally, you got Wally, he's holding a container. Yeah, this is the one with the orange. He, he, he he's only from twenty thirteen, but he's he, he's in good shape.
guitars and amplifiers in here. Looks like a music shop. I have yellow ones, I have green ones. Too many fish in the sea. Look at the pretty colors. Look at the pretty Christmas lights. And all the pretty colors. Has any, anybody heard, operator? I'm still here, Green Dragon. I was just wondering, because I heard you on 15, and then you got quiet when you came in here. Well, I, I, you know, a lot of people talking and stuff, I don't want to, you know, interrupt and everything, but, uh, yeah, I was up there on uh, 15 with Double B and Rooster. All right, okay, I heard you up there. It wasn't too bad, but I heard you. Was I bleeding you over? I was listening to you up there. Yeah, well, shit, man, you're, uh, I can, if I uh, go out in my backyard or climb on my roof, I can see your house. <laughs> yeah, I'm only, uh, I mean, I'm only doing about eight watts. For shame, 3 dB more. If I had, yeah, so I was going to say, luck, luckily there's nobody out there patrolling to catch you, uh, illegal operator. Good thing nobody's running any power. No. Would we do that? We'll do something like that. Would we do that? Well, why don't you go over to four on the scale there when I key up? My radio is completely stopped. Yeah, so is mine. Me too. Even my microphone. Yeah, I'm off. This was stock. Stock uh, Galaxy. <laughs> the stock Roy 604 with a D104M6D. It's got four watts. Did you need a mic adapter? Actually, this radio only keys about two watts, but I'm using my D104. No, not for this thing. I wired an N6B to it. Man, it got quiet. Only for a second. Yeah, it doesn't last long. Well, now that I got time off, I can go hunt the uh, hunt that signal down on Bellevue Avenue again. Is that the early day? What's that? Is it in there every day? Oh yeah, it's in there right now. Oh wow. Teens, trucks and buses, left lane only. Mile marker 31 through 38. <laughs> it's in there constantly. Yeah, they got the automatic transmitter. It hits a couple of bands or uh, uh, channels. Yeah, it's in there all the time. Over here, it's loud too. Yeah, it'll do 19, 20, 21, maybe 22, uh, 18, 17. I get it on 19 and 21 real clear. Yeah, another automatic uh, transmission. Probably not legal, but it is. What transmission is that? Uh, the Turnpike has automatic transmitters. It transmits from like 17 to 22, uh, saying that the left lane is, you know, uh, is for trucks and buses only, right lane closed. Automatic transmitter. Oh, wow. When did they start doing that? I've heard it on 19, but I never listened to it on other channels. Yeah, they've been doing it for a couple years. I've not heard that. Probably with the 4-watt radio transmitter, you know? Yeah, but I can hear all the way over here, and I imagine it's around Harleysville somewhere, or Lansdale Interchange. Yeah, no, they'll put it up on the top of uh, the hills, you know? They'll put it right on the peak. It's like a little box, looks like a, like a generator box. It bangs me pretty good over here. Yeah, they know to put it up high. So four 
watts at the top of the hill by Marymead Merck and, you know, maybe another one up there on the, the hill uh, South Mountain or something. Well, they're really, really loud in Green Lane. Seven zero. Yeah, they're just they're just hanging below forty meters, and uh, a couple of them. I think I know one or two of them. One guy's out in Lancaster or York somewhere out there, and um, at least that's what I think. And uh, there are a couple of other guys around. Unbelievable, but it's funny as hell sometimes. <laughs> Do you call them banded? A skew? Cattywampus? Operating on 27.370, lower sidebands, not raising any eyebrows. Yeah, I don't even think that the red flag goes out for that one. No, no. But, uh, as long as they're not st uh, starting interfering with anything, they're, they're pretty, you know, nothing will happen. I know that there's a situation here locally that... Um, has has caught their attention and has started to uh, perk interest. And um, once the uh, about May June, I think, is when things are going to start to uh, appear around here. Doran, I hate when I have to change my appearance. Don't. You're going to have to brush your teeth. Hey, Sparky. Badger. I got something I want to play. Are you ready? Bring it on. All right. Well, that sounds like internet over uh, house wiring. You think so? That or a pumping station? Yeah, it's right at the intersection of, uh, um, it's Bellevue Avenue in between Kime Street and, and uh, uh, what was the, uh, Cross Street, right? Beach Street, Beach and Kime, and there's like a little dog leg of, uh, Bellevue, and that's where it's coming from. Could be Comcast without a termination resistor on their line. How about Verizon? Verizon wouldn't have anything like that, would they? Nah, they're old school copper stuff, and the, the FIOS doesn't give off RF. The beauty of that, light speed. But you're saying Comcast might be the culprit, huh? If they're close enough. All right, I'll give them a holler. Um, I've got that, and I've uh, also got a guy from Pico that, from time to time, he'll uh, he'll trace down uh, strange signals for you if you're nice to him. So maybe I'll have to give him another call and see uh, see if he'll take a walk around and make sure the uh, power lines over in that area are fine. Yeah, Ron and I have both had good results with Pico. You know, after paying them 
probably over a hundred thousand, hundred thousands of dollars over the years. <laughs> yeah, you don't do any good anyway. Can you imagine that tallying up your electric bill and how much you paid Pico over the years? Well, hey, you know, it all depends on how you treat the people you got to work with, too, right? I got Med Ed over here. I'll tell you what, my peak of service is definitely like 98%. Like, we're not in the 90, you know, there was, oh, 99% brain efficiency. It's like, yeah, we're down in the lower mid-90s. We lose power a lot. But you didn't have to run your snowblower this year. Oh, I ran it once. Got to have a look at it. Turned it into a go-kart engine. I'll buy your snowmobile for $5. Very good. Gumby. Yeah, about 35 years ago, I complained you know, to MedEd about a transformer that had to replace. It was interfering with the radio. And they said, oh, we can't do that. There's nothing wrong with it. It's working. Well, needless to say, about two years later, it blew up. Then the guys were out there and fixed it. I said, oh, I said, you won't believe me two years ago when it said about the transformer. So I said, now you're out here replacing it. And the one guy said to me, he said, yeah, I, said, I remember getting a call from the He said, was that you? I said, yeah, it was. And he remembered that. He said, we should have listened to you. This wouldn't have happened. Any place you can still get 94 octane gas? Yeah, Sunoco. Yeah, people keep saying that, but where's one located? Do you know? Your car starts like it's summertime. I just bought 10 gallons of 100 octane today. Uh, Cam 2? No, Aviation. Heritage Field. I've been getting the ethanol free stuff at the Wawa. Oh, yeah? Oh, wow. Is it all ethanol free or is there certain pumps? Certain pumps. Does it run better? It runs about the same. I mean, I'm only using it in my lawnmowers and stuff. Yeah, Trump approved like 20% ethanol, which wasn't cool. He's not that cool. Double fill. I've been using aviation fuel ever since that ethanol hit the market. And I haven't had any problems with any of my engines. I think it's 89 octane, too. 89, yes. There's an alternative to that. If you go to... We use CAM, too, in some stuff. But I like to get some straight 90 point sign if I can find a pump that's handling. It's in a green bottle. You can use that. That works. Most of the sun stations around here don't handle 94. Yeah, it's got a little lead in there for friction. Get the lead out. And birth defects. Aviation fuel at, at the uh, Stowe Airport, is it is it over six a gallon? It's five dollars a gallon right now. Thanks. Did that would come down. It did come down. It well, I remember paying six fifty. But yeah, it was uh, four four ninety five a gallon. Yeah, I, I paid like six, right around six twenty five or 
or something. That was about 10 years, 8, 10 years ago. I don't remember exactly, but I know I paid 6.30 or something. Um, yeah, I remember a friend of mine back in the 60s, he said he had a 61 Impala, and he would get so many more mile an hour out of it when he ran aviation fuel. Sounds hard to believe, but anyway, I still like running it. Yeah, I got an antique BSA, and it doesn't like ethanol. I run that 100 octane low lead in there, and that, it's a lot easier starting and running that single cylinder BSA uh, motor. So, yeah. And then I run it in my chainsaws, my snow blower, the lawnmower, weed whacker, everything. And all, all that stuff, everything runs. Never have any trouble. worth the extra money to run that fuel. You know how many problems with any of your equipment. Yeah, run 93 octane all the time. 94 when I can get it. Can't fill some of the stuff. Don't need to fill some of the stuff. Power and sweep. 93, 94 octane. Cheap. Makes sense. In my truck, too. Double D2s. Head now. Can't do for our catch you guys next week. Yeah, man. Come back. Good night, Double D. Good night, everybody. Good night from Classic Radio Roundup. Good night, Double D. Terms and conditions apply. Yeah, where's the night train? Fall asleep. Trying to get his PJs on. And it got quiet. I didn't even switch radios. The old Craig has been cranking that long. Yeah, I thought about switching. I thought about it. I'm like, nah. I like running this big old CB radio. That thing sounds real good, too. Still got that 120 hertz in there. This one's a keeper. I'd rather, I'd, 
rather do an impersonation of Unit 64. Ow, ow, ow! and shoppers in aisle five blue light special yeah it's like a cart with a battery in this true oh yeah i remember the blue light specials Bologna, 
Maybe they have it of the guys in the bar with a loaf of bread and a jar of mustard. <laughs> Drooling. I, I need it. I need it right now. I know where you get it. Yeah, it's the holidays. It's Christmas. I know you have it. I need it. I know where you get it. Go get me some. Oh yeah, this place I'd go there and pick up like half a dozen pallets of their product and you know bring it to a uh, grocery store warehouse or something like that. Before I leave, they'd take like a uh, plastic bag and fill it up with like 10 pounds worth of end cuts and just throw it on the back of the trailer. So one time they uh, had a um, uh, order that they screwed up on and they accidentally triple smoked some bologna. And brother, let me tell you, that stuff was freaking awesome. You could like just throw cheese in with that, and it would it would like get smoke. That's the best stuff, man. It's a secret. Like you can literally put it in your tray, and other foods will smell smoke. What frequency was that? This on next door. That better for you. Well, uh, you can go back to that thing. I know. I know you need to give that, give that baby some air time. Well, I actually did get air time. I'm all right. All right. I understand, man, because I can't stand Roger beeps when I have my headphones on. Yep. Oh man. Somebody. Somebody yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mo, Larry, cheese. Quiet, you knuckleheads. I'm broadcasting. Uh, Stu Gm down there in uh, uh, Springhouse. We're going 
to do that one day at work when I used to work over there, and we just never got around to it. So, you know, you got to call and make an appointment. It's not like open to the public all the time. Yeah, that's a good thing. 58 to high tomorrow, 62% chance of rain, chance of a thunderstorm. Yeah, thunderstorms from 10 to 11, and then 2 o'clock, 4 o'clock, more thunderstorms. So unplug your coax. Thunderstorms last night. I slept through them, though. That's tomorrow, that's tomorrow, tomorrow. They were so bright at 2 a.m. I was up. It, it woke me up that they were so bright through the window. I slept through it. <coughs> well, I said, didn't you hear them thunderstorms? No. Well, we heard the guinea hens. My, my wife's like, what's that noise the guinea hens in my neighbor had were woken up and then, you know, the lightning and all. Hey, I got a question for you guys real quick. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Sparky, um... My Ameritron AL, AL 811 shut down on me the other day. I pulled the fuses. They're uh, 250 volt, 12 amp fuses. Um, I didn't have I didn't have uh, 250 volt, 12 amp fuses, but I had regular 12 amp fuses that are AGCs are rated for 125. I run this power supply off household current. Is that all right? Might have like different time delay characteristics, but you know, 12 amps is 12 amps, so. The lower voltage fuses have less resistance in them, which is actually are better. Yeah, it's a time thing, they'll, they'll trip faster. Well, I mean, this, this amp could be wired for 220 though, right? I mean, and that's probably why it had the uh, 250 volt uh, fuses in there. Yeah, how come you don't have that thing wired to your dryer outlet? Well, I can pull 220 at 12 amps. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Because the wall socket's right here, and the 220 is over there. Yeah, you should run 220 to that sucker. That's more efficient. But if, if that thing's designed to be using 12 amp fuses at 220 volts, then you've got to basically double the size of those fuses for 120. They have to be 24 amps. Well, I'm running, actually, I'm running 215s right now. So you're not pushing it too hard, then. If you can run 15 amp fuses at 120 volts and they don't pop. No. So you're saying I can run 20 amp fuses in there? If it's rated for 12 amp fuses at 220 volts, I mean, you got, yeah, that, I'm supposing that, you know, that's the way it was set up to go, but, you know, if it's to set up to use 12 amp fuses at, one, at 220, then you'd want to double that for, because you're having the voltage, so you want to double the current. Okay, well, there's two fuses, and only one of them went bad, and that's what shut down the radio, or shut down the amp. So if there's 212, that's 24, so I can actually put the equivalent of two, like 220 amp fuses in there, right? Is that a 3 or a 4-tube version? 3-tube. Yeah, you're, you should be okay. I got the 4-tube version over here, and um, if I'm not mistaken, it's running a, uh, a fuse in each one of the legs. You're running yours on 220, though, are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm running mine on 220. I run all of my stuff here on 220, but if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, both both uh, both fuses, uh, one is in each leg. It's a Euro thing. Yeah, yeah. Which is um, not quite uh, kosher in this country, but that's a different story. Now, we don't like using fuses on the ground side, because that leaves the hot floating. Correct, yep. If you're doing 220, you've got two hot pentagrams, so you do want to do a fuse in each leg, each hot leg. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure the fuse he blew was in the hot leg, and um, you may have had a uh, flashover or something in one of the tubes. Let's hope not. Why do you suppose this fuse blew in the first place? One of the tubes may have had a little hiccup. Yeah, the flashover draws a, a more current. The fuses, uh, this 
ceramic fuses. They're not glass, so there's really no way to look down inside. But the fuse is not burnt. It doesn't smell burnt. Um, I think it might have been a mechanical failure in the fuse itself. No meter will check that real quick. <laughs> fuses aren't like light bulbs. All that they try to say that or people say that fuses like a light bulb. I'm like, uh, not really, unless it like oxidizes. More like a flash bulb. You get to use it once. Well, if there's a little weakness in the metal and it looks for some reason to blow anyway, yeah, it'd be a little white fuzziness on it. Were you running the amplifier and uh, on AM or were you running it on sideband? Was the fuse fuzzy and green? I was down on 75 meters on sideband. Okay, was, uh, was the amplifier uh, dead for a while or shut off for a while and you powered it up? Oh, yeah, yeah, it goes on and half hour, 45 minutes before I even uh, turn the rest of the station on. Um, but the thing about it is, I don't believe it happened while I was transmitting. Because I got up and walked away and I came back and sat down with another cup of coffee and I just happened to look over and the lights were off and I'm like, hmm. I started playing with the buttons, the buttons didn't do anything, so I'll just, I'll just screw it and unplugged it. Maybe it went into oscillation. Doug, did you put another fuse in to see what happened? Yeah, I put a set of 15, AJC 15s in there. And, uh, but they weren't rated for 250 volts, they're only rated for 125. And I put them in and I stood way far back and hit that button behind the cover of a rolling chair. and. Lo well, and behold, the lights came back up and it started running again. I'm like, all right. So little by little, I started going from one band to another and bringing up my power real slow and checking every band. I, it, it's back to where it was. It's just different size fuses in it now. Well, like the Italian said, don't worry about it. Hey, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, what he said. Yeah, what he said. Hey, 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 Frankie. You, you, you pissed off the family, man. And you, you know what that means? Yeah, as long as I don't wake up and find a horse head in my bed. That's what I was going to tell you. What about fish on your front steps? What, am I funny, funny like a clown? What, wait, wait, you look know, me. You call me a clown? Don't worry about it. Ah, forget about it. You're gonna wake up with a horse in your bed. <laughs> Which tube are you running in there? An 811 or 572s? He's got the 811s in there. I put 572s in them. That's a stronger tube. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The 572s uh, have a little, little bit more, more strength than the knees. The uh, 811s, especially if they're uh, made in China, they got all kinds of crap floating in there, and I see them spark all over the place, almost like Fourth of July sparklers. You can't, you can't run the 811s horizontally because the grids will sag and short out. Yep, that comes on top of it. Yeah, the 572 Bs are better. Yeah, graphite. Yeah, I picked up a um, 2100B and some 